This is meeple. These are all meeples. This is not a meeple, but we'll come back to that. This meeple, as they are now called, comes from Hansim Glucker's 2000 megahit Carcassonne, a tile placement game. The earliest editions of Carcassonne refer to the pieces simply as followers, however they have since been renamed. Now, there are some conflicting accounts of people using the term meeple, but the most commonly accepted origin of this comes from a single gameplay account on BoardGameGeek. User Dave Bazzani wrote this session report of a game of Carcassonne that took place in November of 2000. One player in that game, Alison Hansel, referred to her followers as meeples, a portmanteau of my and people. Now, meeple is obviously not the only term created for or about board gaming. The board game glossary on BGG has over 200 entries, but meeple is arguably the most prominent of these terms. While it's harder to track the word's rise to prominence, there's no debate over how commonplace the word has become in the board gaming vernacular. It was even recognised in 2015 by the Oxford English Dictionary. A friend of mine with a degree in linguistics explained to me that one of the signs of an established and mature community is effective social networking, which allows for terms exclusive to that community to be passed around and to grow organically until they become commonplace. They become signs of belonging in the community in addition to their original meanings, and I think that Meeple most certainly has become one of those. But Meeples are also a huge part of the visual language and iconography of hobby gaming. To many gamers, there is no shape more iconic than Hamzim Glucker's Meeple design. The shape was designed by former Hamzim Glucker's CEO, Bernd Brunhofer, and that company currently holds a shape trademark for the iconic shape. It should be mentioned that Hansim Gluck is famously friendly in letting people use it. More specific than dice, more personal than the suit of cards, the meeple is inescapable and beloved. But how many meeples are there? I spoke to Panda Games Manufacturing, one of the largest manufacturers in board games today, and they told me that in 2018 alone they made around 20 million meeples. Only one component was more commonly made, and that was wooden cubes. So what does a meeple look like? There's a lot of discussion over what is and isn't a meeple. Board gamers do love minutia and rules, if nothing else. Hansim Gluck said that It's hard to say what counts as a meeple. The characteristic form from the meeple of Carcassonne is important. Some have different legs and arms, but I think a meeple should bring to mind the form from the Carcassonne meeple. Back on BGG, a poll that's been running since 2017 seems to have settled on the following rules. It needs to be a 2D representation of sentient life, so no cars or wheat. Both BGG and Hansim Gluck agreed that a chess piece is most certainly not a meeple. The anonymity of the piece is a real plus. It can represent almost any board game, making it a great visual signifier for the hobby. These days, meeples come in all colours and sizes, materials and more. They can be found on shirts, storefronts, websites and more. There are entire games dedicated to these. It seems likely that meeples will continue to rise in popularity, both as a term and as a visual signifier of our hobby, and I struggle to think of a better ambassador than our mostly wooden friends. A term created between friends in a single gaming session, shared online, now commonplace all over the world. I think that's a pretty solid sign of the enduring and social power of board gaming as a hobby, and one of the main reasons that I love this hobby so much. So here's to the meeple, and to many more. Thanks for watching my first video essay. I don't know exactly, I just wanted to try something a little different. Do you have an attachment to any particular game pieces? Think there's something even more iconic than the meeple? Feel free to leave it in a comment below. And thanks for watching.